What's up? It's the Cran K. We're in the next part. Please go check out the previous part to chat to gauge your bearings. I was telling you how my ex and I finally officially ended, and how it is that I thought he was calling me to reconcile, and he told me, "Gal, I signed on my business papers to remove yourself as a partner in my business." I was throwing my toys out the cart. I was angry. Not only that, I was sad. I did not know what to feel. I felt murderous and all that jazz very well. And then he came to my office, finally made me do what it is that I had insisted I can do it remotely without having to see him. But he just wanted to see me basically be muted, neutralized, handled like I needed handling. I was your ride or die. But hey, you're not going to fit our booty. And the tables would turn. Later on, that would become a thing. However, right now, you are just demon like an animal, stampeding a sister like you won't one day. Want to come and say, baby, can we talk again? Very well, do you. To dang. Mm. He left telling me thank you with a whole bunch of attitude. Hey, eh? yeah, and I'm hurt. I am crushed, but I have to be at work and finish my work day. But I'm devastated. Okay, he has left now. Vum vum vumed, and that was the end of it. We were never gonna speak ever again. I was livid and mad like a hatter. Mm. Go home after work. I did not even tell my friends this time around. No comfort was working. I was inconsolable. Didn't call anybody. There was nothing anyone could tell me. Nigilin nam. Mengi man zi. Zi 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 zi. I was papnat. Nobody could tell me jack. Nothing worked. Did not want to be gossiping with these ladies where we busy bad mouthing this guy dragging him through the mud because frankly at this point he had conquered me. This is how it ends? Really? That's what I thought. I never would have imagined that's how my relationship with this guy would end. He was so humble once upon a time. He was so sweet. He doted over me. He bought me flowers. When he had made mistakes, he would not allow me to kick him out. He refused to let me kick him out of bed. Instead, he insisted on sticking around in bed. In the morning, I would wake up in his arms. That guy. The same dude that refused to let me sit on the opposite far end of the couch. Instead, he shuffled towards me until I eventually just let him embrace me. That guy had just done that to me, okay? This dude, that even though in front of these boys, he would put one persona forward when he was with me, he was basically just saying, look, I'm just doing this for an act in front of my boys with Frankly, you that girl and I love you. And that's what made me stick around that guy. The dude who kept on telling me for crying out loud that it doesn't make sense for you and I not to be together. It just doesn't make sense. And I strangely agreed. Like it was our motto. It was our punchline. It does not make sense for us to not be together. Yeah, no. He left me. Got that plume of smoke. That dust smoke. Basically saying, <laughs> whatever chick, you're arrogant. I'm not going to be groveling after you. You ain't even all that. What if? Bah! And thanks for finally signing my document. At least now I'm a free man. Good riddance. Good riddance. He treated me like good riddance. And got it. I was a nag, clamorous, cantankerous, and a cheating girlfriend that he just could not get over. So he kept on letting her come back in. And finally, he stood his ground. He treated me like I had this humming. Wasted all my years on that bugaboo. I wasn't laboring your secretary. We can every day of the week. Was that the job and no one else was there? Helping you get on your feet. Eleven acres of sacrifice. Without the kids, I have nothing to show. Wasted my years a fool of a wife. I should have left you a thousand times. Da 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 da. Again and again and again. I said I'm not gonna cry. No 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 no. I'm not gonna cry. It's not worth the time. Living it. Living it. Living it. I started singing that cry in my bones when my friend was there that day when his mom had uncalled a sister. And I was like, I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna shed no tears. This time around, Gibina from the beginning. I knew there were no guarantees, guarantees in love and taking chances. But this year is so unfair to me. And look at the circumstances. And shit doesn't help. Mm -hmm. So that the worst part mm, Those are the words that we said from the start And now that you said that you're leaving me I don't get that part <laughs> hey, I experienced a divorce without even being married <laughs>
through hell and fornication. Stop tying yourself to gangstrosities, guys. Divorce feels like death. I'm sorry. I feel like I have been divorced before. I divorced. I wasn't married to that dude, but I know what it feels like. Precisely because I went and lived a life with him like I was married. And when then that fell apart, I got to me and the divorce and the rejection was on another level. It was so astronomical. Went home, sister girl. Shame. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'll go to prison. I don't care. Orange is the new black. I was seeing purple, red, pink, and basically the rainbow. <laughs> they make females kill them. Mr. Abasin, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, but no, I was not trying to go to prison. I had a bright future. I was a beautiful woman. I was only 26 for crying out loud. What in the world am I doing? Morning and girl, and I imagine if I had given this dude a baby and he did that to me. Yar, man. Yar. I likely might have even ended up using his kid, our kid, against him. So I still had a clean slate. So I tried to calm myself with basically all the pros in my life. I had just gotten a promotion. My life was doing better, blah, blah, etc. What a, what a fish paste. Yeah, no, huh. <sighs> Okay, whatever. I then go, then I sleep overnight, wake up again. My eyes are crusty with like tears. They talk. Yeah, my tears are crusty. My eyes are crusty with tears. What is a talk in English? I don't know. Whatever. Toko. Alrighty. Cool beans and bananas. Uh, I wake up in the morning still in that state and my heart. Ooh, guys. Whoa. Just like it. When I was in dreamland, it was better. When I woke up, reality struck. I was like, how am I supposed to work like this? How am I supposed to have meetings and not think about this thing? You know, this guy has such a bad, like, effect on me whenever things were messed up in my life. One time, I nearly lost a job. I told you guys when I was in the call center and I found out he cheated on me. I, 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 I kept on rerouting calls and not allowing them to come through to me. And my boss saw my activity on his monitor and called me into his office and basically nearly fired me he gave me a final written warning and all i could think in my head is like how am i supposed to work i just got a promotion literally i have proven myself to a point where i got a promotion and here it is that i'm going to be dropping the ball as a brand spanking new project manager in my new job hey this guy's messing with my prospects and my future what's that like i can't be taking a break from work because what some dude like dumped me he didn't dump me i dumped him but he was like i'm banja afterwards I <laughs> married wasn't funny then. <laughs> hey, my name is Tizo Yam, guys. I saw I broke in. Devastating, you know, such a bad music playing in my background. Violin and thundering. Lightning was rumbling. Rain was falling, you know. And then I heard violin and organ. Piano playing at the same time. While my tears are falling and there was no reprieve. That's how I can describe my 24-hour general disposition. So that morning, I told myself, okay, girl, I'm 17, go back I've been able to conquer. During the time we were broken up, I was cool. I was healing. I was going to church. I just need to let the week pass. Yo, I am out of this thing named. God arrested me, you guys. God arrested me. The Lord got me to a crossroads, crossroads. See you at the crossroads, crossroads. There was so much wrath in me that I could have chosen hard knock revenge or just like, eh, hey, man, this is too much. I'm not fighting this. I'm not battling it. So I get in the shower in the morning. Finally, I get to tell people how I got born again. <laughs> I keep telling them I got to be born again in a shower in the morning. Now you're going to know how that even happened. The context in the run up. I get in the shower in the morning, get up, uh, right, for work, getting ready for work. And as the water is falling, I, 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 I couldn't. Yes, the weakness. I was overwhelmed by just a barrenness, a weakness, a sorrow that was all-encompassing, all-consuming in my soul. And I ended up sitting on the shower floor just sobbing, like sobbing. I'm on the finished Giza water, end up showering, but I did not care. I had cornrows. Like, you know, a black girl girl you don't get that wet because you're gonna become frizzy underneath was an afro i allowed water to fall on that and i was gonna go to work with that frizz vibe water was falling 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 <laughs> kind of crying i wouldn't be surprised if my neighbors heard me because it was like 6 37 in the morning <laughs> I 
could not con like inconsolable and uncontrollable sobbing until finally <laughs> in that state i was like god help me that's what i said i said god help me i re i hadn't prayed about it this thing that he did i did not go to god because i was like what are you gonna do for me i asked you to give me some dude that i didn't want and he tried to make me a side piece i asked you to give me a sign about this guy and look what he did to me but finally i surrendered literally he arrested me he put me in a rock and a high place i got to a squeezy point and i was like <laughs> God help me! Literally at that instant moment, guys. I'm not lying to you. I'm manga and wakambi. Right there and then. God help me! Yo, guys. God's head like moya. Hallelujah. Moya. Amen. How God filled you guys right there on the shower floor and the peace of God. It's like I went from thunderings. Remember I told you the organ is playing lightning. It's striking rumblings, peals of thunder while a violin and an organ is playing. And there's just like lots and lots of rain. It went from that to like heavenly sprinkly like fall. Like, you know, autumn leaves falling type tranquility and peace that came over me with the the, the 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 rain stopping the sun starting to shine and then there's like sparkles of glory and joy in the sky I, like it wasn't a black and white day and night transformation it was immediate i said god help me and he poured into me oh guys my born again experience was the bomb <laughs> I got set free. Same time. Same time. I got saved that morning on the shower floor. Shower floor, you guys. God help me. Next thing. Yeah. It just calmed down. Instant peace. Instant peace. Instant filling of the Holy Spirit. Instant baptism of the Holy Spirit. As water is still falling on a sister body. On the shower floor. Oh, hey. God had been pursuing me for a minute. When some girl, but I'm calling you home. What's wrong with you? Why are you running away? Stop running. So when I say to you that my advocacy for reformed theology and to tulip with irresistible grace, it is because I could not resist. God brought me home in such a sovereign fashion that there is no way under heaven that salvation is something that you just kind of knock on the door and like, hey, I'm trying to do it today. What's going on? It is a pulling. It is a okay. Was I a funamanje? It is a set date. It is a by this you are gonna come, and now is the time to call you and when you get called everything is going to fall apart around you that has nothing to do with god until finally you surrender to him i wanted to be with a man that was busy really trying to love himself some satan and god was like i'm going to make him crush you to a fine powder until you cry out to me and that's exactly what happened and as soon as i finally did i was like why not do this sooner oh it's nice over here so this is the kingdom of heaven what a waste of time for 26 whole years i have not been in this joint what in the world was i doing all along one of my biggest regrets in life is not getting saved when i was just a child because as soon as i got saved i was like what the heck was i doing this whole time nick is singing now go that's why it's written in god's word the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl you guy a merchant identifies its great value goes and sells everything that he has that he, that he might acquire this great and precious pearl of great price yeah so when i found out that i was wasting time all this time fix men get married have children all that jazz without jesus without god when i was busy dilly dallying around trying to be with a really hard boy that i met on training hey Ebatung, if i had given my life to christ before that meeting even that hard boy on training he would not have dragged me through the mud by breaking my heart and trying to make out of me a side piece i got saved that fateful morning and um the irony of it is that it was close to august of 2011 and august is my actual birth month so i got born again in my birth month uh, the month when i was turning 27 but i was pursued by christ in my from basically my 26th and a half year of life up until 27 that's why i say i got saved when i was 26 and a half but 227 because the holy spirit was already operating around me however i was saved like in the run-up to my birthday when i was 27 so that 27 club your boy amy hawaiian house where celebrities die because they are rebellious I was basically supposed to be in the 27th love because I was going to be ended by the wrath in my heart over what my ex did. He was going to finish me off. Plus on top of that, 
my own mother rejected uh ancestral worship calling in the sense that busangoma and she transferred that yoke to me basically made a deal to exchange me for her to say that she will be the one to become Sangoma because i don't want to do it and when they looked into me they saw that i had a very special gift i told you the gifts of the holy spirit are without repentance and people in the occult can see a spiritual gifting in a baby and they were like very well at the same age that you were supposed to twasa we're gonna call her and guess what that age is 27 i was going to get the lamp basted and ransacked by the call to be a sangoma but I got saved before it happened. And if at all I hadn't gotten saved. And I get a lot of that guy. I was going to fetch my ex. I was going to twasa. And I was going to use my powers. I was so angry and so full of revenge. That I was going to make my ex a monument. Because of me getting initiated into ancestral worship. But Jesus was like my kid is not going to become a murderer. I told you. I was murderous. There was so much hostility in me. Lomundu, he had broken me so much. And I was like you are not going to do that. But instead of capitulating to all that wrath and all that anger. That was eventually going to kill me my my soul first i cried to god and he was like <laughs> to the devil he laughed just when usatani you know there is this song that a lot of youtubers do uh it's a it's a christian song but they show their former life and then their new redeemed life in christ and it goes the enemy thought he had me but jesus said you are mine the enemy thought he had me but jesus said you are mine the enemy thought he had me but jesus said you are mine and they do a whole show showing their former life and their now life former life now life proper that song is so applicable to my life because the enemy thought he had me but jesus said you are mine and wait see i get goosebumps i get goosebumps when i see those testimonies because that's exactly what happened to me an overnight transformation instant healing instant forgiveness instant peace and calm instant i am not uh, what is this i am not upset at you anymore brother i'm not angry at you i just gained it did like immediate deliverance my ex was operating in darkness he had held me hostage with sorcery that's why um the what do you call this the the the, the hold the pull to him was so strong he had held me down with witchcraft and then he pulled away from me the way that he did however with the bond still there that was that was fostered by sorcery and when i cried to god it was cut straight away and so that's what relieved me it was like a corset that was finally let loose and I could breathe, allowing my mkaba to do its thing. I allowed my pot belly to breathe and no longer was I like, held into a relationship that I wanted to be gone from. The arrogance that he walked around in was because he understood that there was something he was holding me down using. And that that stunt that he pulled, it was going to shadow me because I was somehow still tied to him. It's like when he was walking away from me, there was a rope around his body that was tied to my foot that would then drag me as he walked and that's what was causing me so much pain so much sorrow and also so much homicidal intent i had a murderous heart i was angry enough for to desire basically lay soup of him and it was cut severed same time as soon as i cried out to god the enemy thought he had me and jesus said you are mine. i got saved that morning guys uh the bondage of sorcery that my ex had put on me was severed straight away whatever he he did to me remember i told you guys that sorcery that sexually uh we went from having really good sex and the next thing it was painful i, I believe that was severed that day there's no way that i can confirm because i haven't had sex with anybody else ever since him right literally it's been 12 years okay um so i wouldn't know but i have a feeling that i was instantly delivered from pretty much everything that he slapped me with in the reunion uh, those snakes that were encircling me in the dream that i had um where he walked away while I was crying out to him on some, you know, baby, baby, like I'm in a corner. And he just walked away while I was basically encircled by a sea of snakes and I couldn't get out. And he just walked out in the dream. When I woke up in the morning, I told him and he was rebuffing it. He was ignoring it. He was pretending like he wasn't there. Like, yeah, all that. Like, like basically what I was dreaming rubbish. Okay. Mm. No, I was set free same time. So that prognosticator slash diviner from KZN that prophesied over my ex and I and told my ex that a very powerful man is going to give him a run for him his money that was jesus the lord used a diviner a numerologist a prognosticator a man like interpreting omens a man that is a psychic a man that is using a spiritual gift that god gave him but for the devil was used just like the witch at endor to bring forth forth the actual prophet samuel he gave accurate prophecy despite not even belonging to the kingdom of heaven because who was going to prophesy me in a church since i was not trying to be in church and satan used so many god-hating people 
to try and pull me away from God. But I know irresistible grace. God conquers. He won me. There was no way that he was going to lose me. Nobody can be plucked out of his hands. My sheep hear my voice and I lead them out. I kept hearing his voice. And the power of the Holy Spirit, even from without me, kept on showing me stuff. And I was resisting, but ultimately I couldn't anymore. And I got born again. He brought that guy, the, the hot boy that I went and training with. And I thought that, uh, that's it. He had a girlfriend wanted to make me a side piece of mistress for life. Something that would have put me in a life of sin. And I made a decision that I'm not doing this. And the same hot boy wanted nothing to do with Jesus. He had an ex-girlfriend that passed, not ex, like a girlfriend that passed away. That got born again and he hated her born again experience so much. What it did to their relationship, the severance, the sword that God put between his girlfriend and him because she got saved it caused him to hate christianity to a point where he was basically trying to tell me you cannot love jesus if you want to be with me because he saw how much i liked him and wanted to basically you he was used by the devil he had no clue but he did manifest demons all up in my world to a point of insulting me in the mall everywhere like you know the dates i went he, he just had these things that he snubbed and threw in my general direction that broke me not so much broke i mean broke is a heavy word that guy i wasn't that into him to a point where he would break me i would have gotten into him if i had allowed myself uh, to but he did you know spew vitriol in my general direction every so often and it was kind of like a little bit of a tease and i brushed it off but he was using that guy to basically cajole me into finding the apparent love that i want but in a man that wants nothing to do with jesus except herein lies the deal the enemy thought he had us but jesus said you were mine the very same guy yeah no why hung gets a side piece and my ex-boyfriend if they see how much the enemy used them maybe they might just repent i do what i do to try and reach the very same people that the devil tried to use to keep me out from the kingdom of heaven to snatch them out from the kingdom of darkness but nobody is listening to my content because these people are doing everything in their power to block me from speaking because they know not what they do my whole ministry is dedicated to snatching people in the occult out from the flames because frankly Frankly, a whole conglomerate of people I once loved in my life, very heavily, including this ex-boyfriend of mine, are going to hell. And I have no interest under heaven in being the only person in my come up circle of friends and family that's going to be in heaven. What kind of a heaven in eternity is that? Sonke, we grew up in a country that preaches the gospel. And yet they are going to go to hell, literally in the hottest part of hell. Because not only did they grow up in a country where the light was preached but they also persecuted a christian put her in a dungeon a ditch a hole leaving her to die so their dirty secrets don't come out when the light exposes that which is dark that they might be brought into the marvelous light and so therefore testify and overcome the darkness that they were lured into the case with my ex is so severely devastating because and as you can tell the way that i talk about him i still love him i cared about him deeply so much so that i constantly used to nag and bug him to go and get screenings at the doctors to make sure that like his brother he does not perish from cancer because this thing is genetically predisposed i could not stomach the prospect of my ex-boyfriend dying i was always so worried about him he was always so careless with his life and I was basically like keeping him together with sticky tape. A lot of times I struggled to even walk away from him precisely because I didn't want him to die. And now that I know that if he did die, hell does exist. And not only that, he's going to be in a very hot part of it. Because like one, I said, he grew up in a, a Christian country that preaches the gospel. He was called to faith at the same time as a woman that he would have ended up married to if he had heeded God. He ignored, chose Satanism, persecuted her once she came to Christ like no man's business. And now here it is that you have died having done all the most. And now you're going to burn eternally in the hottest part of hell all because you wanted to keep this a secret it is very traumatizing devastating and frankly i have been standing in the gap for all of these buffoons for the entire time that they've thrown me underground in darkness to live basically like micaiah in a prison cell eating meager portions of bread and water because i dared prophesy the truth to a dying generation i am being ignored disregarded nobody is listening to me ever since getting saved only three years did i live literally above water the rest of it i've been drowning and now they are watching me die saying i i i could say i am dying from envy because i'm not capitulating or basically perishing from persecution so women are just watching me suffocate men are watching everybody but um, the lord as he was perishing on the cross said forgive them father for they know not what they do literally these gangsters have no clue they don't know what they are subjugating themselves to they have no idea that they're sending themselves to hell they are going to never mind help but the hottest part of it because he who was close to the light will be beaten with more blows people who heard the gospel are going to be beaten
beaten with more blows and more blows shall you be beaten with when over and above hearing the gospel you decided to go and persecute christians you put the sword to their neck you put them in a position to die you tried to cause a christian woman to commit suicide because when i know i got saved that morning in the shower so that i could one day do this exact thing that i'm doing but i'm doing it underground don't nobody want to get me out because she still looks good i literally i'm getting killed because i'm beautiful i'm getting killed because i never rotted i never died the thing that was supposed to kill me did not perish me but this is what the scriptures have to say luke 21 the end of things is at hand guys the end of all things is at hand and jesus says that for the sake of your prayers be sober but ain't nobody out in these streets trying to be sober luke i'm and matthew mark luke is before john luke 21 i just want to help you understand what's going on over here and why i will never perish and why you will perish by simply observing me perish because i will never perish i'm evergreen i'm like a person that has been put inside hyaluronic acid for a preserver i'm never ever going to do what people want me to do because this is my promise according to luke 21 from chapter 19 listen from verse 19 then he said to them that's jesus nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom there will be great earthquakes and in there will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and pestilences and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven but before all this so basically before the end of all things before the world comes to a blistering end a halt which is where we're headed and i'm trying to prepare a whole bunch of people for that time before the earthquakes in various places the famines the pestilences the things that wreak havoc in your life that are going to be basically the fruitions of the end of the of all things in the last days re book of revelation before all that falls apart this is what you will predictably do to the body of christ but before all this they will lay their hands on you and persecute you delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake this will be your opportunity to bear witness settle it therefore in your minds not to meditate beforehand how to answer for i will give you a mouth and wisdom do i not have it guys for i will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict you will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends and some of you they will put to death you will be hated by all for my name's sake but not a hair on your head will perish by your endurance you will gain your lives that's why i guess i'd so finally that's why i am freakish preserved i'm 39 in just a month and i look like nothing ever happened for the level of suffering that i'm enduring i have been put in some kind of salt solution some preservative some and i'm just not perishing not a single hair on my head is perishing my hair not a single gray has popped out it is jet black one day i will show it to you the hair underneath here is jet black i don't even know why i'm saying one day that's my hair you know as i'm lazy underneath this afro this is my hair this is my natural hair look at it look at my natural hair it is guys where do you see any gray and it's growing like at an infernus speed it's growing at the speed of lightning not a single hair on my head has perished let me put my afro right back where it needs to be not a single hair on your head will perish my hair has not gotten thinner it has gotten thicker it has only grown uh, guys luke 21 luke 21 from verses from uh, uh yes verses 10 to 19 is literally hand to love the experience of my life before the end of things as we know them the tribulation believers in the last days prior to jesus coming basically rapturing them and fulfilling revelation on the earth are exactly like john the baptist a voice in the wilderness in the run-up to the return of the son of man and what they say is you brood of vipers repent and keep up in like literally do what is better and keep up with repentance for the sake of your souls because right now all you are are a bunch of pharisees you are whitewashed tombs i i, I wish i could find that but i don't want to bore you by just paging and paging and paging the john the baptist uh, i think i might even find him on and indeed the book of what uh thank you sana found umdimu is so good the lord is is so good frankly i'm going to read to you all right what john the baptist basically uh saying i'm reading in matthew right now i'm sorry if i'm quiet i've been speaking now for 35 minutes give it away taller the part where uh john the baptist it, it, it's basically just like wreaking havoc okay in pharisees that were coming 
over to listen to his message and he, he dissed them and called them a brood of vipers in fact you know what i, I want to actually get to it but before then let me read you from matthew 10 peace not but not peace but a sword to explain to you that sword that separated my ex and i that separated my my, my not my sorry but like the dude that wanted to make me a side piece and his girlfriend the lord has come upon the earth not to bring peace but a sword he separated these couples and these guys ended up hating jesus do not think that i have come to bring peace to the earth i have not come to bring peace but a sword for i have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a person's enemies will be those of his own household whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me whoever finds his life will lose it and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it this is what the lord has to say about a situation that we are all like walking at right now this is in in matthew 10 i really want to find this message uh a voice in the wilderness that is john the baptist i really want to find it yeah but too. kingdom of heaven has suffered violence the violent will take it by force that's exactly like papa i'm out here in these streets saying exactly that uh what am i looking for let me like i'm actually gonna look for it go google guys i want to read it to you google better open for me i want to read it to you before we get out of this part so you can understand what god feels to unrepentant cities how he feels about people that are busy walking around with a form of godliness denying the power thereof like you are walking around into the baby and you're persecuting the actual true church you are in a lot of trouble the end of all things is at hand brood of a viper that is in uh first peter somewhere therefore uh for the sake of your prayers uh, where am i oh goodness gracious matthew 23 matthew 12 34, yeah matthew 12 i found it mm, i'm sorry no i'm gonna read it to you like i am so sorry matthew 23 33 hi man i'm sorry like i'm proper gonna find this thing matthew before we get out of this part matthew 23 33 the enemy said he had me and he said you were mine the enemy said you had you he had you but jesus said you were mine okay i'm going to read you matthew 23 i'm gonna read it all and then get out of this part and be done however many minutes it ends up being seven woes to the pharisees and the scribes okay not all of it just up until the woes uh, it's uh the pharisees he says no man i'm looking for when not not when jesus was calling them a brood of vipers but when john the baptist ish i feel like i'm wasting time here but if i have to cut stuff out i will the enemy said he he thought he had me but jesus said the enemy said oh come on oh why this thing of me not knowing where things are in the bible it's messing me up matthew 3 7 matthew 3 7 it's all the way in matthew 3 jesus also said the same thing so he basically agrees with john the baptist that they're just a whole bunch of snakes matthew 3 7 jesus said you were mine Matthew 3. Yes, thank you. Thank you, son. Uh, those are y'all that be out in these streets taking God for granted. John the Baptist prepares the way. In those days, John the Baptist came, this is Matthew 3, came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, for this is he who um, was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. This is what we are doing, last days, saints, in preparation for the second coming of Jesus Christ and in trying to get as many people to make the rapture as possible, but in the absence of doing it, basically trying to reach tribulation saints for basically sainthood okay <clears throat> now john wore a garment of camel's hair and leather and a belt around his waist and his food was locust and wild honey then jerusalem and all judea and all the region above the jordan were going out to him and they were baptized by him in the river jordan confessing their sins but when he saw many of the pharisees who the woes in matthew 23 are about woe to you pharisees you teachers of the law careful to clean the cup on the outside but your rotten man's bones those guys the ones who are basically self-righteous nina any kibela ama hashi you guys who are in the church but you don't have a relationship with jesus he, they're talking about you but when he saw many of the pharisees and sadducees coming to his baptism he said to them you brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come exactly who warned you to flee from the wrath to come bear fruit in keeping with repentance and do not presume to say to yourselves we have
have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able, uh, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now, the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. You can parallel this with John 15. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand. And he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn that would be us in the rapture, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is how strongly John the Baptist feels about Pharisees and so too does Jesus indeed as it is displayed in Matthew 23. Guys, repent. Next part.